Jennifer Edwards, psychic medium. Hello, Janine, astrolog astrologer extraordinaire, I have to say. Thank How you very you? much. Thank you very much. Good Friday afternoon to you. Yeah, end of the week. Brilliant. End of the week. Best time. Best time. And I've got my cup of tea. Guess what I'm drinking today? What's that? I thought I'd try your chai. And I yeah. like that. Very nice. I have a nice cup of chamomile tea because I've had a really big day today and chamomile tea helps me stay asleep. Otherwise, I tend to wake true. up at night. It's true. It's very relaxing. Yeah. Well, now we've settled with that. What are we going to talk about today? I'm going to hit a surprise on you, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. I haven't told you what we're going to talk about today, but here's my topic. So let's see what happens. When did you realise you were going to be a psychic medium reader? Now that you can be a psychic medium, but being a reader, when did you know? Um, probably um, it evolved. I didn't actually start out to be one. I didn't even know I could do it, uh, really. Um, I would say probably in my early 30s because I became a healer. And that happened because I started to do some massaging. And then people complained that they could feel spirit people working on them. Really? And I went, oh, yeah, that's cool. Right, thinking, wow, hell? and it scared us so many people because people could feel them working on their throats and God knows what. No way, yeah. And uh, so I thought, oh, well, maybe I should do some healing. So I did this healing, and half the time I didn't have to do much, I could just sit on the stool, really, but people didn't appreciate that. So I I did the healings and then I got a room. Um, I was working from home, very tiny house with three little kids. So that didn't work so well. So I went and got a room at a, on the other side of the, of the city at um, a place that had a massive crystal in the room. Huge, huge thing. Didn't help me though. But anyway, it, um, I did that for ages and then it sort of evolved into a spiritual counselling, which spirit taught me. And they taught me and showed me and worked out. And so I, I sort of saw thousands of people over about 25 years. And, hmm. That really is an evolution. Hmm. So it wasn't something I learned. It was something, um, or spirit taught me. It wasn't something I went out to the world and learnt uh, because um, I was pretty... Um, I uh, didn't have a lot of money. I had three small children. And so um, I all didn't have money to learn anything. So I just had to do what spirit told me and it worked. It changed a lot of people's lives, I think. And um, yeah, so that's how it evolved. And then um, they told me to move into state, which I did. And I stopped working for about 10 years, five years, something like that. And then that's when I up, met you. Yeah, 10 years ago. So something like that. Um, and then um, I just stopped the healing and just did the um, life direction stuff, as they call it now. And uh, so that's what I did. So as a child, you had no, no aspirations to become... Um, what about a healer? Did you want to become a healer as a child? No. I was brought up in a, a Catholic religion, which in the in those days very strict. And um, even though I had all these experiences, it was frowned upon. So no one ever talked about it. So I I think I repressed it mostly. Um, I was even told in my twenties that they couldn't be friends with me because I knew too much. You know all this sort of stuff. And I didn't realise that was psychic. I just thought that was normal. So it's only now when I look back that I realise that I had that gift, but no one talked about it. So I just tried to fit in and trying to fit in. Hmm? 
They were very lonely days. Very yeah. lonely. And no matter if I did go to, um, as I grew older into adulthood, if I went to a development class, um, it didn't always work out so well because I seemed to be able to know things and see things and people didn't like that. So I found it all very difficult um, and um, not something I'd recommend. Although if I'd know what I know today, I would have taken a totally different view. But, um, you know, I was trying to be normal and normal was difficult too. So, you know, I tried not to know too much because people don't like that. So it's all very difficult, I think. It's a different and has, career. Has anyone ever wanted to learn from you? I think a lot of people would like me to teach a few things, but I just don't feel it's my calling as yet. I just got other things I want to try and do first. Um, maybe later. Mm. Fascinating. I guess what oh, you sorry. do. Sorry. I guess what you do. I mean, it, you said it, it didn't happen until your thirties. You actually did readings. Mm. It does take quite a level of maturity to do what you do. A lot more than being an astrologer. So it, it probably couldn't have happened earlier. I think. Um, I think uh, in my normal life, I would have done it naturally without it being called a reading. I was a, a numerologist for quite a few years um, and I did it then. Um, and, um, but I didn't find a, a lot of people want to pay me for that. So I had to do other work, you know, to keep it, keep it a chin above water. Um, and um, I, I think it's just not having the right people around you. If you're lucky, you have the right people around you who'll mentor you and get you on the straight and narrow, so to speak, or who will inform you that this is actually an ability, not just something you've got that's normal. Mm. And so until you can distinguish between what abilities you have and what you think is normal, um, it's, it's a hard road to work out. And when, when you can do things like that and you just want to live a normal life and be accepted by people, it's very, very difficult. Yeah. And they were in the days where there was no internet, so you couldn't well, the internet, find out what other people were doing. No. Well, the internet was early days then. And um, yeah. there was very little. There was certainly yeah. not psychic stuff. Certainly not me. Yeah. But we did have the spiritualist churches, um, but um, that's being Catholic. That wasn't something that I had, you know, looked at going to until, as I said, I was an adult and they're very political too. So it was just all very hard. I find it all very hard um, then. Now it doesn't matter so much, but then it was difficult because you were an odd person out. Very weird. Yeah, it's really not for the... The faint hearted is it you have to be very very brave mm. especially with you with well you know and australia was pretty backwards so we're we're you know like 10 or 20 years behind europe and america and even england in some ways in this field you know with all the new sciences coming through the understanding of energies the understanding of mind the understanding that the brain is the end is the um switch box or the receiver not the mind, and the mind is out there in other dimensions as well as this one. Science knows about all this, but the general public don't accept that. So you're still weird. So it's hard. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, it is really hard. And sometimes you get things wrong, so that's really hard. And, you know, and because it's an energy thing, you know, it depends on your moods too. If you're not feeling confident, it doesn't go so well. If you're feeling down, it doesn't go so well. <laughs> oh, it's very difficult. It's a yeah, difficult that's time. Right. Mm. That's right. Yeah, well, I wasn't that. Uh, I wasn't that mature when I started. I, I think I was really quite precocious when I look back on it because I remember when I was ten, my mother gave me a new idea magazine, and I read an article on astrology and. Uh, I, it was love at first sight and and I just knew that that was it that was it I was going to be an astrologer now what the article didn't say is that astrologers weren't that common in the world and I was never going to meet one till I was 25 <laughs> so 
you know, I had to put that to rest for several years. But I did study very hard as a teenager. And on my 16th birthday, I said to my mother, I want to have a reading with someone. That was my 16th birthday present. I don't know where I found a reader, but I found a reader. And to this day, I remember what she told me. And uh, I thought, oh, this is a really interesting thing I'm doing here, having a reading. And then I got my tarot cards when I was 17, didn't know what I was doing. And then I was 21. And I found my tarot and astrology teacher. And I started studying a three-month course. And, of course, it's at, in retrospect, it's very rare to find a teacher for tarot. Because tarot is very hard. Not many people can do it well. Anyone can be an astrologer. But uh, I, was, I started with tarot, even though I'd studied astrology. And uh, my teacher was extraordinary. Now, I don't know whatever happened to him because he's not, he doesn't have an online presence. But I remember walking into my class just thinking, well, I'm, I'm here. This, this is what I was born to do. Again, tarot reading wasn't really on the hit list of career moves. Uh, coming from an academic family so that had to be put to one side so I was studying on the side like you would have been and then my tarot teacher um, I had a reading with him not long into studying and I hadn't had a proper tarot reading at that time and I bawled my eyes out and I had such a full-blown experience I was crying, I was sobbing. He'd ripped my heart out and cross-examined it and put it back in. And, and I was so overwhelmed by that. And I was overwhelmed by the power of that experience. It was just such a soul experience like I'd never encountered before. And it was at that point that I said, well, if that had such an impact on me, that's what I was going to do. And uh, it was definitely when I walked out of that reading, you know, I, I, I was going to do that. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I didn't even know if I'd be any good. But it was such a gripping experience. I couldn't think of anything else I'd want to do in life. So, so, you went to, um, so you went on to learn tarot first up. Well, I finished my tarot course and then my teacher started an astrology course and that was right at the beginning of, computer program so I was fortunate to start studying with a computer program because my maths isn't very good I wouldn't have done it otherwise and then I went from there and uh, I think I was a bit precocious because when I was 24 I got a job in a tarot reading shop and it was way too early to be doing stuff like that I was way out of my league but you know you eventually learn to swim and um and I just loved it. I couldn't think of anything better to do. And still to this day, you know, I, I, you do do tarot. I love to do. Yeah, you do do tarot, and a lot of, yeah, know. Lot of I, people know, know that about you. Jeanette. They don't. They don't. That's my safety net, tarot. Yeah. And so, how did you start doing astrology for people? Because I know that you went on to study naturopathy. Um, courses and, and did your degree in science. So how did it come about that you started to do astrology for people? Well, similarly, when I was about 14, I decided I wanted to be a naturopath as well. And interestingly, when you look at the history of naturopathy, it's really medieval medicine and all medieval doctors were astrologers. So when you really strip it back, it's not too different from each other. I just had a calling for both. And naturopathy seemed like the more conservative option. Mm. Um, so I, I studied naturopathy, but at the same time, I was studying tarot and astrology on the side. And by the time I graduated, when I was 24, it was about, was I going to be a naturopath or was I going to be an astrologer tarot reader? And, and I really did both to be honest. And my job as a reader really got me through the first 10 years of being a naturopath. So it buffered me through that. Oh, so and there was a time where it was a hundred percent of my income because mm -hmm. I was studying. Mm -hmm. And I was way too young though. 
way too young when I look back on it. You learnt a lot, I guess. You learnt. You got to, I, I just had to get on that horse and ride as fast as I could and I had to learn real quick because real in those quick. days I was very poor having just done two degrees back to back and it was either read or clean houses. Yeah. So I just had to read because it was the best way of making money. Well, it's a great apprenticeship, you know, and every every biz, everything you do has an apprenticeship. Even naturopathy, I guess, you'd have to do clinical hours or whatever before you became fully qualified. And so with astrology or tarot reading, it's good to have a few years practice, I should think, um, in the real world, uh, just to get up to speed and get your hand in and your mind around it. And uh, there's nothing more than doing a number of people to learn things, is there? Yeah, that's right. And, and the, the, the thing about astrology is astrologers are academics, they're intellectuals, mm -hmm. and there's so many amazing books, websites on astrology. My daughter came in this morning and said, how can I study tarot? Oh. And I said, well, you really can't. You need a teacher. And I stand by that, mm. that tarot is not an inter intellectual art. It's a different part of the brain. You do need a teacher. Astrology, she said, I want to study that too. I said, go online, just read it. You'll get it if you just read about it. But tarot, I was very, very lucky to yeah. find a tarot teacher. He was extraordinary. He was gifted. He was a triple scorpion. Sun, Ooh. moon, rising, sign in scorpion. He wasn't very, a very nice man. <laughs> but... I followed that man around for seven or eight years and sucked the life out of him yeah. until he couldn't stand me anymore. And uh, I always wanted to be better than him. So I was quite ambitious and he didn't really appreciate that. Mm. But um, he, doesn't, he, he doesn't do it anymore. So I, I came in, it was a window of opportunity and um, I was there at the right time. So I said to my daughter this morning, a, I'm not going to teach you uh, because she's not a very good student, as in she's very impatient. And I said, you're going to have to go and find somebody and I don't like your chances. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's so fascinating where life leads you, isn't it? And one of the things that I think you're amazing at is astrology. And I, one of the things when I first met you you told me that you, at some stage in our friendship, you were going to blend the Vedic Eastern astrology with the Western astrology. And uh, when you did my chart, I have to say I fell off my chair because it was absolutely so spot on. And the wonderful thing about it that I loved about it was that you were able to um, really help me to understand myself. And, and I think that really, really assisted me to accept um, a lot of my stuff and I know I've sent a few clients to you who needed guidance in career which I love it for as you know and for timing and so Janine what have you found really interesting about blending those two systems together? Vedic and Western? Hmm. Well it wasn't easy for me. No. Well, I started looking into Vedic astrology many years ago and it just looked like I'd have to learn Greek and it, and the fascinating thing is when I started again about seven years ago it was really easy so it's all timing yeah so when I started again I just I just I just absorbed it and I went yep got it yep got it and now I have an incredible uh, absorption rate of Vedic information mm. so it's all timing and and I probably got to a point where my western knowledge was hitting a wall and I was feeling dissatisfied and thought there has to be more there has to be more and I wanted to uncover more and as I was reading more about western astrologers I thought they were getting more off track mm. and so it wasn't doing it for me it just wasn't turning me on so to answer your question, how do I blend it together? Yeah, I went through many years of having um, clashes of paradigms. You know, they're not, uh, 
they're compatible in some ways, not in others. Mm. They don't always like each other. There's rivalry between. So I had to find the interface of the two Venn diagrams <laughs> together and go, well, okay, they don't actually work if you fuse them together, but they work if you partially overlap them. Yeah. So that's what I do. I partially overlap and I look at the common denominator in between and I just do my own thing. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's so fascinating um, what you do. And I do think, and I've always told you this, that I think this is going to be a thing and that more is to come. And uh, so I guess knowing you really well now that you've probably got that little brain of yours ticking over to find what other systems can I learn with this astrology? Yeah. So what ones are you inquiring about these days? Look, there's all sorts now. You can study Babylonian, Persian, and Egyptian. It's all very easy to say you've learned that system, but you know, I'm a Taurian. And I'm quite possibly the only Taurian astrologer reader I've ever met in my life. Really? Why is that? Not many Taurians like astrology? No. Or? No, oh, really? Why is that? They'd rather work in a bank. I don't know. But, um, I, you know, I make money out of being a reader, so that's very Taurian. A lot of them are just scholars and they don't actually do any work. No. But I'm a working reader like yourself. Um, but because I'm a Taurian, it has to be real, okay? So I don't think there's any point studying a whole new paradigm of astrology unless it works, unless it's applicable to my clients. If I can't, into, if I can't bring it into a reading and make it useful and real and constructive and use it like materials to build a house, then I don't see the point. So that's the thing. I don't just learn new things because it tantalizes my intellect. It has right. to have a purpose. So okay. I just toss everything that doesn't work for my clients. Yep. And it's, so that's work. I'm not interested in learning everything for the sake of it. No, I couldn't imagine you doing that. Um, I think you would learn to apply it so you can apply it. Um, yeah, or I, I learn it and go, what can I apply here and what can I not apply? And I chuck the rest. Yeah. Mm. So you know what I read, Janine, that a lot of um, business people around the world use astrology. And I remember mm. re uh, talking to a friend so many years ago who was uh, talking to someone who did commodities trading and he used astrology for to learn what to back on the commodity share market. And I just sort of think that people don't really understand that it's used quite widely in finance and business quite and governments quite in a quiet way. Do you want to comment about that? Yes. Um, I find it all interesting as well. And I don't know why we don't do it more in business, but I can tell you, as I've said many times, we're an Aquarius nation. Even though Aquarius has a reputation for being new age, it's actually not. Aquarius is a very cynical and sceptical sign. We are a, a sceptical nation of scientists at the end of the day, which is why for you and me, this is a hard gig having a career in a sceptical nation. Yes. Whereas you get into the Pisces nations and, you know, you can be as esoteric as you want and uh, you have a place in society. So I think in Australia it'll never happen, but certainly in other countries they, they will and can and do use it for that purpose. Mm. You know, um, the, especially the, the nations that are... Uh, water signs you know they, they won't have any trouble stretching their imagination into the esoteric realm um, I still think a lot of um, I, I do think that there's some uh, Australian businesses and business people who do use astrology on the quiet well I study uh, entrepreneurs and I always love to look at their chart and they are quite commonly Pisces or have a strong Jupiter Pisces angle and they, they're the ones that run with their gut instinct and they love astrology. Well, there you go. 
And do we, each state in Australia have their own astrology chart as well? Or do you? Yeah, I'd like to astrology. know that. Hmm? Pardon? I'd like to know that. It, it all rests on, you know, as a group of people, which day do you identify with? So I don't think we really have Victoria Day. Is there no. a day? Well, it's Melbourne Cup, isn't it? Well, I think every, every yeah, well, I guess we had the one date of federation, didn't we? Um, and yeah, but nobody look, really. But there would be settlement dates for each city, for sure. It probably is. I know there's suburbs, like in Melbourne, I used to live in Malvern, and I know Malvern had a starting date that was Taurus. Oh, okay. And in the middle of the market square in Malvern, which is a, a well-to-do suburb, there's a huge brass bull <laughs> in the middle yeah. of the shopping area oh, where the God. clock tower is. Really? So, <laughs> so you know, that's not uncommon to, to, to choose a suburb, a suburb's founding date yeah. to fit with the identity of the suburb. Now, Melbourne is a is a suburb of wealth. Yeah. Well, it's Korean, isn't it? It's Korean. It's about wealth. You yeah. know, I used to work in an expensive shop in Malvern where we had the best luxury items. Of course. So, you know, that's that's an example. But, um, perhaps we'll just leave it at that. It's getting dark uh, here. Yes, it is. And we need to go and have our meals. So um, thanks for the chat, Janine. It was so thanks fascinating about both of us, I think, today. All right. We'll see you next Friday. Okay. Cheers. Cheers.